Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. For those of you who I have not met, I'm Reverend Cheryl. <laughs> and I don't have a mask on right now, so you can actually you know, maybe see me from here. <laughs> I gotta confess, I'm a little nervous. This is the first time I've gone live with you guys. You get to hear me. No editing. This is it. There, there will be no editing today, so uh, I'm a little nervous about that. And uh, a little nervous for the fact that this is kind of my first Sunday with you. Yeah. Kind of is. I mean, I've, you've been watching me online, and we've been visiting, but online. But this is my, our first in-person worship. So I am so thrilled to see so many of you. Yes! Welcome. Back. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of chords back here. <laughs> By trip, just ignore me. It's nothing new for me. I, I am a bit of a klutz, <laughs> so when it comes to that. I'll let these two folks get settled in. So a few things today. I, I appreciate you, uh, your patience. Things are going to take a bit to get thing, the bugs all ironed out, basically. Thank you, Ben. I'll go find some shade to sit in. I don't want anybody passing out. If you find you're too hot, by all means, find a patch of shade. Get a drink of water, whatever you need to do um, to make yourselves comfortable. We have to be a little bit flexible with our worship right now. You guys are doing a great job social distancing, wearing your mask. Now, if you are situated, now that we're all situated, you can take your mask off. But I ask if you're moving around and you're visiting afterwards, please take your masks. Put your masks on, not take them off. Now. Put your masks on if you're moving about, or if you have to go to the washroom, or whatever. Just do what you need to do to make yourselves comfortable. Um, if you are more comfortable leaving your mask on, for safety's sake, do, do what makes you comfortable, please. And please respect each other. Treat each other with kindness. That's actually our theme for the day, kindness. We're all about being good friends and good neighbors. So. Now that we've got that done, let's move about some announcements today. So, we, as you've all heard by now, I'm sure that we had to cancel our summer our program. It was, hard, just, it was a hard decision to make, but not everybody is fully vaccinated. Our kids are not fully vaccinated and won't be until later in the summer, if then. And the younger ones under 12 won't be. So we just thought it's safer. We want them to be able to go back to school in the fall. That's our main objective. Get the kids back in the classroom. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yes, we want the kids to get the kids back to school in the fall. So we want to keep our transmission rates as low as possible and keep them safe all summer long. And they don't want to be stuck in a building learning all summer. They need to be outside playing. So on that note came up with another idea instead. We don't want them logging onto a computer. We could have done a virtual summer camp or whatever. But it really, they did the whole school year pretty much that way. And they're tired of it. They need to be outside in the fresh air doing things, just doing things. So we're going to make up these weekly themed packages for the kids to take home with activities and recipes and different games that they can play. And they can come into the church and pick them up on the Friday before, and they can have it for the whole next week. And so hopefully they get to do a little bit more active things. Hopefully they can do things as a family then, or with their grandparents, or whomever's watching them next week, gives them a little something to do too. And it still keeps them in our purview as well. They get to see how we're operating. Yeah. Oh, I think, do we have more folks coming in? All right. I like this. More folks coming in. That's awesome. Drive-in. <laughs> almost. It's almost a drive-in. Where's the big dumb house when you're on it? So, okay. So there's that. And also, so we have a service today, but then the next two weeks I'm away. I'm heading to the cottage next Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be there for a week. I'm back on the 19th ish somewhere around there I will be back but for the 11th the worship for the 11th and the 18th um, our friends over at first and uh, central have invited us to join them in their worship online um, so you can catch it live online through zoom by um, getting their 
link or you can catch it afterwards on um, Central and First both have links to their YouTube video after the service is over. So you can do that as well if you want to catch it that way. Or check out one of our neighbors, another one of our neighbors and see what else is going on in the neighborhood. Just do it safely. That's all we ask. Do it safely so that you can come back and worship with us on the 25th. So I will be back on the 25th and I think on the 25th we're going to have another outside worship. And then we're going to play from there because by then we should be into stage three and our numbers inside will be higher. If perchance it should be raining, we have a way, we're only allowed 15% capacity of the room right now. So the worship committee and I got thinking, okay, if we can, that's roughly, what is it, 27 people, or oh, 22 people, sorry, in either the sanctuary or the hall. So if we need, if we have more than 22 people, we will put, we will project from one room to the other. So I'll be in one room and the other room will be able to hear me and see me on the screen. So that's the backup plan if it should be inclement weather. Ah, that jacket, good, excellent. They could pull in if they wanted to, that's easier. Okay, let's take a moment to prepare ourselves for worship. On this joyous day that we return to meeting in community, to welcoming each other, with, we acknowledge that our community has not always been loving and caring and inclusive community. Gather us in God and help us welcome everyone and make everyone feel welcome in your name. I'm going to begin today with the acknowledgement of our kinship and th give thanks for those whose land we now inhabit. And please follow the acknowledgement uh, in your bulletin. Does anybody have an extra bulletin? Or, I didn't even see them. Oh, Betty has it. She oh. has them. There is. Creator, we come together today as diverse united peoples to give thanks to you, maker of heaven and earth. We come to listen, to learn, to sing and pray, to consider our place in the order of things you have created and are creating. It is right and good to give thanks for the lands on which we stand, for this is wisdom we learn from indigenous peoples of this land. That we are one with the earth, its water, air, animals, and plants. Such wisdom, our interdependence with all life, is something too easy to forget in our busy lives. It is a gift and a challenge to us to remember. And so we take time to acknowledge the lands on which we now live. Many of us have come from other places, arriving from distant shores, our families arriving years ago, or some of us more recently. When settlers came, they were met by others who were already here, already knew these lands, already lived rich and full lives based on ancient and proud cultures. Let us take time to name the people of these lands. O oh God, as we acknowledge the peoples who have lived on and stewarded these lands since the time immemorial and their continued claims to the lands, help us to become neighbors that we might live together in better ways. For we are all kin in Christ, all my relations, with each other and this earth, its waters, air, animals, and plants. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome. Where is the wind appearing? 
are gathering him this morning, and we're not singing yet, we're not allowed to do that just yet, but we're going to listen to uh, Linnea Good's uh, Like a Rock, number 92, and more voices. Like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like the river runs to ocean, our home is in God. before God in a prayer of approach. Holy One, you are our rock, a foundation upon which we stand. Fill our hearts now with our your joy, joy, abiding presence. Encourage us by the teachings of Christ to live with care and compassion for self, friend, and neighbor. Bless us now as we reflect on our relations with indigenous people, our kin, as diverse yet united people. Now it's going to take us a bit to get our feet, because I probably do things different than you're used to doing, but I like to lead into our, well, we're all children of God, right? So children's time, for lack of a better phrase. Um, with a little song that you may appreciate. Teach Me God to Wonder, number 299 in Voices United.
So, teach me God to wonder. So I have some wondering questions, and, and um, I'm not going to pick on anybody today because they don't know me very well yet. So I, I can appreciate that. So I'm going to ask everybody for their help with my wondering questions. So I'm wondering, what's a neighbor? You can just shout it out. Pardon? A good friend. Who's your neighbor? Is, is it? Everybody. What makes a good neighbor? You want to be a good neighbor, right? What makes a good neighbor? Like, being kind. That's that's really important. What about the, that grouchy neighbor next door, you know, the one? We don't have grouchy neighbors, I might add. We have good neighbors here in this neighborhood. I, I haven't yet found one that's grouchy. What, what about the grouchy neighbor or the person who's maybe not so nice? Are, are they still your neighbor? Yep, they're still our neighbor. How do we have to treat them? Yep, we have to treat them exactly the same. We still have to treat them with kindness. What about that strange neighbor who does things maybe a little differently than we do? How do we have to treat them? Absolutely, we have to treat everybody the same with kindness, right? Even if they are just a little different than us. We want our neighbors to be nice and friendly and helpful and trustworthy. We hope that they keep up their yard, right? That's important, <laughs> at least for some people. We hope that they share their resources, and we would do the same for them, right? If we have more than what we need, usually it's zucchini, <laughs> especially at this time of year, you know, or extra squash or cabbage or whatever, you share with your neighbors, right? You want to be a good neighbor. That's what makes good neighbors. Sometimes it's hard to live next door to somebody who's not quite so nice or friendly or maybe just a little strange and they don't respect your property. But we have to take into consideration that we don't know the whole story. We don't know. These guys are getting their exercise back there. And maybe you want to keep them with you. <laughs> just hold on to them. <laughs> They're chasing bulletins onto the road. We don't want anybody getting hit. It's called spreading the gospel by wind. <laughs> it's God's way of reaching out. So we have to respect people, even when we maybe aren't the nicest per they aren't the nicest persons, we still have to treat them. Even at the same, we still have to treat them the way we want to be treated. Right? Right. All right. So in the news lately, we've heard some stories, however, of people who are not being treated very nicely. And we heard about a family who were killed just because they were a different religion, because they dressed different than us, because they worshiped different than us. And it was heartbreaking. And we know that they are our neighbors, even if they are different than us. And hate is a horrible thing that infests our heart and it spreads really, really quickly. So we have, it spreads worse than those wildfires out, wildfires out in Vancouver right now, out in BC. We need to put those out as quickly as possible. And so a movement started just days after the incident in London. And it was called, and I have the sign, Hate has no home here. And I believe that of these people in this community, of this community of faith, that we know that no matter who you may be, no matter what your beliefs, no matter what your race, your color of your skin, who you love, what your abilities are, that here you are safe, that in this place, you have a home, and you are welcome here. And so today, I picked up two of these signs when I saw them, and I picked up one for my house, but I also picked up one for this place of worship, for this community. I wonder if I can get a hand for me. I'll put my 
mask on. And I wonder if one of the girls wants to help me put this in the flower bed. Ah, just right over here beside me. Beside the three and here. We're just going to put it over here by the ranch. Kate has no home on this property. And we want all of our neighbors and friends to know that. Thank you. And I'm going to ask, because I keep forgetting which girl's went to which was foolish who. Zoe. Zoe, okay. Long hair. Long hair Zoe. Short hair quick. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. Now she's going to go and get her hair cut next week and it's going to last me. <laughs> That's okay. I'll get it. I'm gonna, I will. I, pro I promise I will figure it out eventually. We want all of our friends to frail welcome here, no matter who they are. And maybe we'll move that sign closer to the road so that everybody can see it. And they know that they can be safe here. When the incident happened in London, Susan and I made an executive decision. It was actually her idea. And I thought, oh, I didn't know there was a mosque here in St. Thomas. We actually sent uh, flowers similar to the one in the corner of the building to the mosque here in St. Thomas and um, put a card with it from our church, from our congregation, just to let them know that we support them and that we are here for them and that we stand with them. But not only do we stand with our Muslim friends, we stand with our indigenous friends who have whose atrocities are being undisclosed every day. And we walk with them as well. So what I want you to take home today is a remember that sign. We want our friends, we just finished Pride Month in June. We want our friends in the Pride community to know that they are safe here as well. We are all here, we are all safe, we are all welcome. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Everlasting God, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Since the creation of the world, you have nurtured us with your love. And yet we shamefully acknowledge that we do not always share our love with others. We are selective about who we choose as neighbors. Only those who are clean or who look like us, who talk right, who seem safe. Loving God, teach us to love you more fully. For in loving you, our lives will show us love to all others, even as your love encompasses all creation in all generations. We pray in the name of your greatest gift of love, Jesus Christ. Our scripture reading, actually I have two, I'm going to put one in the bulletin, comes from Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40, the greatest commandment. Teacher, your commandment in the law, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The parable of the Good Samaritan from Luke 10, 25 to 37, actually 29 to 37. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In response, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he was attacked by robbers. And they stripped him of his clothes, and they beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, poured oil and wine, then he put the man on his donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you may have. Which of these three do you think 
was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers. And the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Love your neighbor as yourself and show mercy. How good of a neighbor have you been? I mean, personally, I think I'm on pretty good terms with my neighbors. Of course, most of them are Dave's family, so they're all related to us, so you kind of have to be nice to them. <laughs> you know, the one across the street's an uncle or a cousin, and next door is a cousin. Yeah, so we, we're all related. Uh, some days. Some days we're lucky. Some days, maybe not so much. We've helped them out and they help us out. Most days we're lucky. You're absolutely right. Most days we're lucky. They help us out. But you know, we are related and we are a lot alike. So it makes sense that we would get along well because we're a lot alike. But what about the neighbor who's different than us? A couple of years ago, Dave's aunt and uncle, um, just lived down the road from us, decided they were going to move to town. Built a new house in town and moved to town. And the couple that bought the house are not related to us. <gasps> but you know what? They're still really nice and they have a really cute dog. <laughs> so I got to thinking about what about the neighbor who is different to us? And I saw this great sign. I could fill, I could put some great slogans out there and I could fill up our entire yard with signs. It says, love God, Jesus said, love your neighbor. No matter their mental health challenge, no matter their immigration status, no matter their sexual orientation, no matter their economic status, no matter their gender identity, no matter their disability, no matter their religion, no matter their race. Love your neighbor. No exceptions. No exceptions. Sometimes they're difficult to understand. And because they do things different than us, and they're unfamiliar to us, their ways are unfamiliar to us, and we might be afraid of them because they are different, and we don't understand what they're doing, or how they worship, or what food that they eat, or the clothes that they wear. But just because something is different doesn't make it wrong. Back when we were being colonized in this country. They met the indigenous people who were already here and they did things different than the European settlers that were here. And then automatically, because things were different, I don't know exactly what they were thinking, but when you're afraid to try something new or afraid to let people do their own things differently than us, you sometimes feel like you, you've lost control. And they want us to take over. Just because we don't understand someone or something isn't a reason to fear them. It's not a reason to have to change them, to be like you. People can be who they are without threatening you. There's plenty of room for differences in our world and there's plenty of room for differences in this country, and in this community, and in this church. Unfortunately, not everybody thinks this way. Over the last few months, we have watched as hate has erupted in our proud nation. And it scares me. And not of it, you know, the thing is, it's not just the incident in London. There have been money, and we're discovering more and more incidences coming to light. We're over 1,200 unmarked graves now, and more to come. Somebody asked the other day, well, what about the 15 schools that the United Church of Canada ran? Are there any graves there? Well, they haven't gotten that far yet. But then I was, the next day I was on a uh, ministry personnel meeting 
And somebody actually asked the exact same question, and they said, well, they said the same thing. Well, we haven't got there yet, but I can guarantee you that when they do, they're probably going to find graves. Unmarked graves. And some people will say, well, things were different back then. Really? Jesus gave that commandment about loving your neighbor long before residential schools. Some will say, well, the churches were just doing what the government told them to do. Well, we live in a democracy. We have a vote, and as a church, we should be standing up against corrupt governments, even if it is our own. And it's the very reason that state and church are supposed to be separate so we can hold each other accountable so that the government can hold the church accountable when things go wrong and yes they have and so that we can hold the government accountable show mercy that's what God commands us to do Show mercy, especially to those who are vulnerable, to our children, to our neighbors, whoever they are. We can do better. Now that's not to say, I don't want to sound like a gray cloud on this beautiful sunshiny day. That's not to say that our country has not done wonderful things. It has. We've done wonderful things, honorable things. We've fought for many things. And I thank those who have done that for us. And I'm not saying our government always does wrong things either. As horrible as this last year and a half has been, I actually think our government's kind of done a pretty good job of protecting us. It's not what we want to do, but we're safer because of it. Please be seated. I want to conclude this portion of the service by saying, let's do better. Let us show mercy to all of our neighbors. Let's not give hate a home in this building, in our homes, on the internet, and in our hearts. Go and love your neighbor. Amen. What does the Lord require of you? this time we would take up the offering but we're still not allowed to do that but we give thanks for the offering and the gifts received this day and we ask for God's blessing upon them as we put them to use 
for his will. Let's continue as we come before God in a prayer of thanksgiving and concern as our community of faith. Patient God, we find it so easy to give lip service to the commandment to love. We can say we know of your love and that we respond in kind, but we far too often do not respond in loving ways to others. We write checks to support ministries of compassion without ever truly feeling the deep compassion that service demands. Dig deeper into our souls, O oh God. Expose the vain selfishness and the fear that seem to block true discipleship. Engage us in ministries of justice in which the kind of love that you call us to is required. Not just in our spoken word or in our offering of money, but in our very passionate nature. Free us and inspire us to love all persons, those whom we would deem unlovable, and those whom we find it easy to love. Help us remain faithful in gratitude for the gifts that you have given to us, and then move us to use these gifts in service to you. These things we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory, forever and ever. Our final hymn is, Many and Great, O God, Are Your Works. So one disadvantage of going live, when things go wrong like that, you can't just edit it out. <laughs> oh well, that's all. As God united yet diverse peoples, we go to become neighbors to each other and to the earth. For in Christ we are all kin. We are all called to be neighbors, to share generously with each other. As we learn more, respect more, love more, we all can gain, not lose. God as Creator will be our rock. Christ and Spirit be our guides. Amen. And thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us. I would, yes, we are back.
And uh, I would invite you to go ahead and meet your neighbors, but put your masks on to do it. Or if you need to get out of the sun, that's completely understandable too. Oh, and I believe, where did Marjorie go? Marjorie, was there something we were going to hand out? Yes, Myrna's going to do Myrna's it Myrna's going to do though. it for you, right? Myrna does everything for me. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that Marjorie has supplied us with a little treat. Ooh. And thank you to uh, those who helped set up this morning and to Richie, our cameraman, for uh, getting this on film so that we can post it for the folks who can't. There's water if anybody wants it over here.